Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into an important health topic that affects many women, vaginal prolapse. You know me, I'm all about skin, but skin is connected to everything else in the body, and what's going on down there is important too. We gotta take care of our whole selves, right? So let's get right to it. We're going to learn about the different ways vaginal prolapse can happen, what causes it, and what you can do about it. Stay tuned to learn more about its types, causes, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment options, complications, prevention, and prognosis. Okay, so first things first, let's break down the different types of vaginal prolapse. Understanding these types can help you recognize symptoms and seek appropriate treatment. It's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Each type of prolapse affects different parts of the pelvic organs and can have unique symptoms and treatment options. Depending on what's dropped down, doctors give it different names. First, you've got cystocele. This is when the bladder drops into the vagina. This is like the bladder doing a little dip down into the vagina. It's one of the most common types of prolapse. It's super common and you might feel it as pressure, like something's pushing down there. You might also experience urinary issues, like difficulty emptying your bladder completely. Next up is rectocele. Think of it like this. The rectum, that's the last part of your intestines, decides it wants to get closer to the vagina. This can cause a bulge in the back wall of the vagina. It can make pooping a little tricky. You might feel a bulge in the vagina or have difficulty with bowel movements, sometimes needing to press on the vagina to help pass stool. Then there's uterine prolapse, where the uterus says, Hey vagina, mind if I hang out down here? This happens when the pelvic floor muscles and ligaments stretch and weaken. This one can be more serious and you might need surgery for it. Symptoms can include a feeling of heaviness or pulling in the pelvis, tissue protruding from the vagina, and urinary problems. Enter a seal is kind of a mouthful, but basically it's when the small intestine tries to join the party in the vagina. This type of prolapse can cause pelvic pain and pressure. And last but not least, we've got vaginal vault prolapse. This occurs when the top of the vagina loses its support and drops. This one happens after a hysterectomy, where the top of the vagina decides to head south. It can lead to a feeling of fullness or pressure in the pelvic area. So, there you have it, the different flavors of vaginal prolapse. Each type has its own set of symptoms and treatment options. It's important to know which one you're dealing with so you can get the right treatment. Consulting with a healthcare professional can help you understand your condition better and explore the best treatment options for you. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. What causes this whole prolapse thing in the first place? It's a question that many people have and understanding the root causes can help in both prevention and treatment. Well, it all boils down to a weakening of the pelvic floor muscles. These muscles are crucial as they support the bladder, uterus, and rectum. These muscles are like the superheroes of your nether regions, holding everything up in its rightful place. Imagine them as a hammock, cradling your organs. But just like any superhero, they can get tired and worn out. Over time, factors like aging, physical strain, and hormonal changes can weaken these muscles. Childbirth is a big one. Pushing out a baby is no joke. The immense pressure and stretching during labor can significantly impact the pelvic floor muscles. And as we get older, those hormonal changes, especially after menopause, can weaken those muscles too. The decrease in estrogen levels can lead to a loss of muscle tone and elasticity. And then there's chronic strain. Everyday activities that put extra pressure on the pelvic floor can contribute to its weakening. Think of it like this. If you're constantly lifting heavy things, coughing a lot, or even constipated, you're putting extra pressure on those pelvic floor muscles. This repeated strain can cause them to stretch and weaken over time. Over time, they can start to give way. It's a gradual process, but the cumulative effect can lead to significant issues. Previous pelvic surgery can also be a factor, as can genetics. Surgeries can sometimes alter the structure and function of the pelvic floor. Sometimes you're just more prone to it, like inheriting your mom's curly hair or your dad's sense of humor. Genetics can play a significant role in the strength and resilience of your pelvic floor muscles. So how do you know if you have vaginal prolapse? Well, your body usually gives you some clues, but it can be subtle. One of the most common signs is pelvic pressure. It's like that feeling you get when you've been carrying around a heavy bag all day, but it's in your vagina. And speaking of feeling, you might actually feel a bulge or something coming out of your vagina. 
It might look like a little bit of tissue or even feel like a tampon that's not all the way in. Sex can also be uncomfortable or even painful. Not exactly the recipe for a good time, right? And then there are the bathroom issues. You might have trouble peeing or pooping or feel like you can't completely empty your bladder or bowels. Some women also experience lower back pain. It's like your body's way of saying, hey, something's not right down there. Chapter 4, Diagnosis. So, you're probably wondering how do doctors figure out if you have vaginal prolapse? Well, it starts with a trip to the doctor's office. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. The doctor will ask you about your symptoms and medical history and then they'll do a physical exam. They might ask you to bear down, like you're pooping, to see how well those pelvic floor muscles are working. And in some cases, they might order imaging tests, like an ultrasound or an MRI, to get a better look at what's going on inside. There are also specialized tests, like urodynamic studies, which check how well your bladder is working. It's all about getting to the root of the problem so you can get the right treatment. Chapter 5 Treatment Options Now for the good stuff, how do we fix this? There are several ways to address vaginal prolapse and the right option depends on your specific situation and preferences. The good news is that there are lots of options and it doesn't always mean surgery. Many women find relief through non-surgical methods. Sometimes, simple lifestyle changes can make a big difference. For instance, maintaining a healthy weight and avoiding heavy lifting can reduce the strain on your pelvic floor. First up, let's talk about those pelvic floor muscles. Remember those superheroes? They play a crucial role in supporting your pelvic organs. Well, we need to get them back in shape. Strengthening these muscles can help alleviate symptoms and prevent further prolapse. Pelvic floor exercises, also known as kegels, are like a boot camp for your lady bits. These exercises involve repeatedly contracting and relaxing the muscles that form part of the pelvic floor. They help strengthen those muscles and give everything a little lift. Consistency is key, so make these exercises a part of your daily routine. Another option is a pessary. This is a small, removable device that you insert into your vagina to help support those prolapsing organs. It's like a little device that you insert into your vagina to help support those prolapsing organs. Pessaries come in different shapes and sizes, and your doctor can help you find the right fit. Think of it like a bra, but for your vagina. It provides the necessary support and can be a great non-surgical option. If hormones are part of the problem, estrogen therapy might be recommended. This can help improve the strength and elasticity of your vaginal tissues. And of course, there's always surgery. Surgical options vary from minimally invasive procedures to more complex reconstructions, depending on the severity of the prolapse. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Many women undergo these procedures with great success and find significant relief from their symptoms. There are different types of surgery, from minimally invasive procedures to more complex reconstructions. Your surgeon will discuss the best approach for your situation. The goal is to repair the prolapse and get you back to feeling like yourself again. With the right treatment, you can regain your quality of life and confidence. Now, I know nobody likes to talk about complications, but it's important to be aware of the risks. If you ignore vaginal prolapse and don't get it treated, it can lead to some not-so-fun consequences. First of all, that discomfort and pressure you're feeling, yeah, that's not going away on its own. In fact, it can get worse over time. And then there are the bathroom issues. Urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, not exactly the kind of things you want to chat about at a dinner party. Sex can also become more difficult or even impossible. And to make matters worse, untreated vaginal prolapse can increase your risk of infection. So the bottom line is, don't ignore the signs. So we've talked about the causes, the symptoms, the treatments, and the complications. Now let's talk about prevention, because let's face it, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? The number one thing you can do to prevent vaginal prolapse is to strengthen those pelvic floor muscles. I know, I know I sound like a broken record, but it's that important. Kegels, kegels, kegels. Do them every day, like brushing your teeth. Maintaining a healthy weight is also crucial. Extra weight puts extra stress on those pelvic floor muscles. And speaking of stress, try to avoid chronic straining. That means no more pushing or straining on the toilet. If you're postmenopausal, talk to your doctor about hormone management. Estrogen therapy can help keep those tissues strong and healthy. The good news is that with early detection and proper treatment, most women can effectively manage or reverse symptoms. 
It's all about taking charge of your health and advocating for yourself. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms we've talked about, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor. They've seen it all and they're there to help. Severe cases may require surgical intervention, but outcomes are generally favorable. With the right care and attention, you can get back to feeling like yourself again. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Remember, knowledge is power and it can change lives. The more you know about your body, the better equipped you are to take care of it and stay healthy. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below and let us know. Take care and stay healthy always.